Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm speaking about International Caries Detection and Assessment System. For that, thank you, Oral Health Talks, for giving an opportunity to speak about International Caries Detection and Assessment System. So the target audience for this lecture is undergraduate students, postgraduate students, and researchers who are involved in cariology, who are dealing with cariology. So what is ICDAS? ICDAS is International Caries Detection and Assessment System. It is a clinical scoring system for the caries used to detect and assess dental caries. And it is used in dental education, clinical applications, researches and epidemiological studies. So why ICDAS? Why not the traditional DF, DMFT or WHO method? So in 2002, various researchers in the cardiology came forward with the systematic review of the literature and they found that uh, the detection of caries were, was inconsistent and the current DMFT is not measuring the caries process. It is not staging the various stages of caries progression. So, and there were also inconsistencies in the research criteria used for measuring the dental caries. So, so to give an uniformity, they have come forward, forward with ICDAS. So the disadvantages with the DMFT or DMFS is it's, it detects the dental caries at a very established advanced stage of the dental caries rather than the detection in early stage. So what happens? The late detection will lead to more extensive treatment and more costly treatment. So early detection is always cheap and it helps in prevention also. So ICDAS is reliable, reproducible, and it gives staging of the caries, and it also helps in detection of the activity of the caries. So historically, in 2002, where international consensus of workshop, consensus of workshop on caries clinical trials happened, after that, ICDA's first meeting happened and in 2004, the concept of ICDA's was put forth to allow the appropriate diagnosis, prognosis and clinical management at individual and public health levels. And in 2007, after extensive research, ICDA's was portrayed in, uh, to help in epidemiological research, practice, research, and education. So the ICDS board, it's an extensive board with major, major universities around the globe and the major researchers. And from 2002 workshop, consensus were made regarding lesion detection, assessment, and caries diagnosis. So here det detection means an objective method of determining whether the disease is present or not. And lesion assessment is monitoring a lesion once detected, whether it is progressing, regressing, or it is at a similar stage. And whereas caries detection is summation of all professional data, available data, including the risk factors. So the traditional DMHO, uh, DMFT or DMFS index only detects the tip of the iceberg of caries. It detects only established, stable, cavit non-cavitated and cavitated lesions. Whereas the dynamic early lesions were ignored. So in order to identify the early lesions and to provide preventive care, ICDS came forward. So here you can see 
the monitoring of the lesion behavior of over time from time A, time B, and time C. So, I see the, regarding ICDS, we can measure the behavior of the lesion. And the advantages of ICDS, it is evidence based and it is preventively oriented and it classifies and stages the caries and it, it can be used in dental education, practice, research and public health and it provides all, all the dentists with a common caries language and ICDS has evolved to comprise a number of approved and compatible formats and it also helps in the decision making regarding the treatment plans both at individual and public health levels. So the ICDS criteria basically it said previously it was one digit criteria and after that two digit criteria came forward and the second digit is the carry score. So here this slide represents the second digit carry score. Zero is sound, one is first visual change in enamel, two is a distinct visual change in enamel, three is localized enamel breakdown without any signs of dentinal involvement and four is a uh, dentinal involvement with a dark shadow and very little or concavitated. Five is a distinct cavity and six is the extensively distinct cavity with visible dentin. So the armamentarium required a good mouth mirror and a blunt end probe that is a WHO or a CPI probe is necessary. The sharp explorer or a sharp probe is completely eliminated while dealing with ICDAS. And before examining the patient, a thorough prophylaxis is mandatory. And code zero represents the sound tooth surface. And there should not be any evidence of the caries or any evidence of the change in the translucency of the enamel after air drying a tooth surface for five seconds. And surface enamel defects such as hypoplasias, fluorosis, and tooth wear or extrinsic or intrinsic stains will be recorded as sound. And code one is the first visual change in the enamel. So after air drying the tooth surface for five seconds, the change in the translucency or an opacity is visible. And after, again, after wetting the tooth surface, the, the change in the translucency or the opacity disappears. Code 2 is a distinct visual change in the enamel. And we can observe the opacity or a change in the translucency even when the tooth is in wet condition. And most often, these early lesions lie in close proximity to the gingival margin or plaque retentive areas. Code 3 is a localized enamel breakdown and after a dying, a drying for 5 seconds, you, you can visible, uh, you can see the change in the translucency or the opacity surrounding the microcavitation and the integrity of the surface is lost. Uh, it will be rough. You cannot feel the smooth surface when probed with the CPI, CPI probe. And code 4 is underlying dark shadow. You can see the discolored dentin through the enamels, translu translucent enamel and it may not show localized break breakdown but we can appreciate the darkening in the form of grey, blue or brown colour. And code 5 is a distinct cavity and the dentin is clearly visible. Code 6 is obvious loss of tooth structure. More than 50% of the tooth structure was lost and it may be possibly involving the pulp with a clearly visible dentin on, on the walls and the base. So it's a dramatic representation from code 0 to code 6. So you can appreciate in the pictures, code 1, after a drying, you can, you can see the change in the translucency in the form of white opaque or a brown color. Code 2, microcavitation limited to enamel. 
code three and code four. So sometimes they may overlap. And code five and code six, you can clearly appreciate the visible dentin. And the second row, you can uh, appreciate the histological pictures correlating with the ICDA scores. So that is the main advantage. ICDA has a histological gold standard validation. And so we, uh, we already discussed ICDA is a two-digit criteria. The second digit being the caries code. And the first digit, we have to denote zero as a surface that is not restored as or sealed. One being the sealant partial, two sealant full, three tooth colored restoration, four amalgam, five stainless steel crown, six PFM or a veneer, seven broken restoration, eight temporary restoration, and four nine denotes for the conditions that is tooth that cannot be examined or tooth missing because of caries and uh, tooth missing for reasons other than caries and uh, uninterrupted teeth. So again, grammatical uh, uh, pictorial representation of the caries codes, code zero to code six. And in a code five picture, you can see the tooth with huge discoloration, whereas the adjacent tooth shows opacity and during wet condition, we have to code it as code two. Okay. And here you can appreciate the pictures of very early enamel caries. And the upper two pictures represents the cavitated, early cavitated caries involving DEJ or dentin. And here we have to code them as code four. Whereas the lower two pictures you can appreciate the last picture, it's cavitated. We have to represent it as a code five. And here are the obvious cavities with visible dentin, extensive decays, that is code six. And coming to the radiographic scoring system, zero being no radiolucency, one being radiolucency limited to outer half of enamel, Two, radiolucency limited to inner half of the enamel or enamel dentin junction. Three, radiolucency limited to outer one third of the dentin. So these are the various radiographs demonstrating early carious lesions limited to enamel. The third radiograph demonstrate the radiolucency involving outer third of the dentin. That is radiographic score three. The radiographic score four denotes radiolucency reaching middle third of the dentin. Five denotes inner third of the dentin, which is clinically cavitated. Six radiolucency involving the pulp. So these are the various radiographs demonstrating extensive lesions, radiolucency involving inner third of the dentin and the pulp. So coming to the activity. So, in case of enamel caries, an active lesion looks like whitish, yellowish opaque with a loss of luster and it may feel rough when probed. And most often noticed in the black stagnation areas. Whereas, an in, a, in case of inactive lesion, surface enamel may be whitish or brownish and it may, it may be shiny but you may feel the hardness of the surface rather than the roughness. And in case of dentin caries, active lesion, you can feel the leathery or uh, leathery or a soft nature on probing. Whereas in case of inactive lesions, the dentin will be shiny, brownish and hard on probing. And we have to differentiate the other forms of opacities with caries. In case of fluorosis, white opacities are seen near cusp tips of the incisal edges and non fluoride enamel opacities, they were centered on the smooth surface and they may affect the entire crown. And regarding the shape of the lesion, non fluoride enamel opacities may be round or oval, whereas in case of fluorosis, they resemble a pen pen pencil sketch. 
and the demarcation of these lesions was not really appreciable in case of fluorosis and it can be clearly demar demarcated in case of non fluorite opacities and color of the opacities is more opaque than normal enamel and it, it may be paper white or a frosted appearance in case of fluorosis and in case of non fluorite opacities they are usually pigmented in the form of creamy yellow or a dark reddish orange and fluorosis most commonly affected are the cuspids bicuspids second or third molars whereas non fluorite opacities most commonly more in first prominent molars and incisors brass hypoplasias generally not seen in case of fluorosis uh, in severe form pitting may be seen whereas in case of uh, non fluorite opacities enamel surface seems to be etched and rough to the explos ex explorer and detection under perpend per perpendicular light when in the tangential view fluorosis can be appreciated whereas non fluorite opacities easily appreciated on the under the strong light on the side of the perpendicular to tube structure so this is our research so uh, on icdas published in european journal of general dentistry and one more research from journal of isppd so these two articles compared I, icdas with radiography conventional and digital radiography in the detection of occlusal caries in the primary teeth and the man behind icdas professor nigel pitts so he is a director of innovation and a consultant at the kings college london and he has headed a major research regarding icdas and regarding the icdas coordination committee and icdas board is a major member and he has done extensive research in terms of validation and reproducibility of the icdas in the permanent and primary teeth so we can have a further reading of icdas now icdas has been replaced with iccms because icdas speaks about caries detection and activity and it doesn't suggest you a treatment plan whereas iccms speaks more about management along with the detection and the staging of caries it is a comprehensive system that is international caries and clinical management system comprehensive caries and clinical management system thank you thank you oral health talks again for giving me the opportunity to speak about icds